us this morning with more on the economy and the markets is Stephen Whiting. Uh, he's the managing director of economic and market analysis at Citigroup. Stephen, great to have you on the program. Good morning. Uh, we just heard from Brian uh, over at the CME, our trader there, talking about how he thinks margin is going to be the biggest problem in the earnings. I'm curious to know what your take is on that. Well, margins overall are still going up, and someone's cost is someone else's revenue. So for a while, it tends to be a shift between one industry to another. The commodity producers will have higher margins in the near term. Uh, the industrial companies will have to absorb that initially, but it'll partly reinvigorate uh, the commodity reinvestment cycle across the world. Okay, so you're not worried about it. I think margins will peak in the 2011-2012 time frame, but revenues, I think, are going to be stronger. Uh, okay. And we're not going to repeat 38% earnings gains like 2010, but we're going to do quite well. But are we going to hit peak profits? Not peak profit levels, peak margins, I think, within this two-year okay. time frame. So then what's the incentive to be in the markets then, to be in the equity markets? Well, 3% uh, and change Treasury yields, uh, a 13 <laughs> P multiple on our estimates for uh, 2011, uh, and significant revenue and earnings gains, about 12% or 12.5% is a rough estimate for earnings gains this year. But Stephen, couldn't you have said that last year in 2010? Absolutely. Same scenario. So are we going to see the same performance then this time around? Well, I mean, bear in mind, earnings up per share up 38% last year, and share prices didn't go up nearly that much. So you have had some uh, PE compression. Uh, and we just think that, you know, equity markets are priced closer for normal returns, whereas treasuries... What's normal returns? What do you well, mean? Well, uh, you know, you're thinking about something that's high single digits, mid okay. to high single digits, as opposed to, you can see right now where yields are, uh, both for rate products and credit, particularly for rate products that are well below long-term averages. But, you know, we didn't see that, because yields have been quite low for treasuries, but you didn't see that shift over from treasuries to equities in 2010. Correct. What's going to portend that this time around? Uh, entrenched economic recovery, uh, stronger growth in capex, hiring, all sorts of things that sustain recovery and follow the very strong gains in profits. Um, okay, then that leads me to my other question sure. about Janet Yellen and what she said about three million jobs created by QE2 in I think it was by 2012. Um, she's a big supporter of QE2. Fed voting is going to shift. They're all supporters of that. So that's all supportive of the economy of the markets or what? Well, I think QE2, I mean, to, to put it in perspective, you know, we could model and assume that it's going to have the effect of, a, let's say, a 50 basis point rate cut. In isolation, that doesn't tell you too much. Uh, but the gains that we've had in leading indicators like profits, uh, the restoration, I think, of employment gains over the next couple of years, I think the role that fiscal policy is playing, in fact, an unsustainably strong role for the long run, uh, the or fiscal old. policy has been playing in yes. stimulus. Oh, okay. absolutely. In fact, we've expanded on it, uh, taking the complete opposite track of developed Europe. But we're about to take away some of that fiscal stimulus, are we not, Steve? Well, in terms of uh, the outlays, things like we never counted on much from construction spending. We haven't built bridges to nowhere, these sorts of, of stimulus. But there's a 2% payroll tax cut, which means that the median American worker will get a 2% pay increase for showing up. Right. Uh, it's very different when you go to other countries and they demand productivity gains and these sorts of things. But it's borrowed money, but, let's face that. But I wake up this morning and I read, you know, across the newspapers that Illinois is looking at a 75% increase in their state income tax. And I just think that that's a sign of more to come that's going to sap demand. You know, so yes, I think there's an offset from fiscal policy at the state and local level. It's a very gradual, pervasive thing. I would bear in mind that the worst, most intense moment of the Great Depression state and local government contraction contributed negative 1% to U.S. growth. Mm. Uh, and it becomes a very gradual thing. They didn't tighten when the economy and the private economy is falling. Uh, and so they tighten now, now that the private economy is rebounding. Well, could that happen this time around? Absolutely. We're counting on three years of contraction in state and local government outweighs in our forecast. And I still think you'll see a stronger total growth rate of the economy. How much would that, just a year and year, how would that, how much would that Less take away? Less than half a percent. Okay. And I mentioned the 1% benchmark for, you know, early 1930s. For early 1930s. Okay. We keep hoping we're not back to that. No. Nope. <laughs> so that period. Stephen, thank you very sure, much. thank you. I appreciate you stopping by. Stephen Whiting of Citigroup Global Markets talking about the economy and the markets. And up next.